In this video, we're going to take a look at a really unique feature within Studio One version 6.5, and that is the ability to adjust the output mapping of stereo effects channels. So let's talk about why this is useful for a moment. Well, for anybody who's working in Studio One up until version 6.5, we were only ever working in studio. So there's a good chance that if you do have sessions that you're pulling out of archive, or maybe if you have printed stems, you're working with stereo effects returns of some of your favorite third-party plugins. Now, a great example of this for me is I love H-Delay and I love Echo Boy. Those are like my two go-to delay plugins. That doesn't mean that the delays in Studio One aren't usable. It just means that these are the ones that I enjoy using. And there's a big difference in terms of how much control you have if you're working with stems that have effects that are actually rendered into the stem versus if you're working with sends and returns. So first of all, let's talk about the setup of this session, and then we'll get into kind of the meat and potatoes of this. If I take a look at my IO setup, you can see my main outs are set to 7.1.4 in terms of the Dolby Atmos renderer. That's what we're working with. And I have these mapped out over here, but also I have the external headphone or rather the additional headphone output set up over here. And we're listening to a binaural rendering of my immersive mix, but I don't have anything set in terms of the binaural mode. This is all set to off. So in terms of what I'm actually recording for the sake of this video, that's exactly what we're working with here. Now, if we take a look at the actual track, like I mentioned, this is a stereo track, but we have a surround panner because this is being routed to the bed, right? So this is 7.1.2. If you double click any of the panners over here, you'll be able to see that. It'll show you exactly what it is. It's a stereo track that's going out to a 7.1.2 output. If I went to the bass momentarily and we just change this to mono, if I opened up the panner of this, you'll see we have a mono track going to a 7.1.2 output. This is important to know just in terms of how everything is working. So if we take a look at this and we solo out this track, Cool sounding track, little bit of reverb baked in, really nice percussion. If I now open up a level meter on the main outs, notice that this is just coming out of the left and right. Now, if I was to do something, for example, increase the size, which would add some dispersion with other speakers. Now we instantly have our sound source, our stereo sound source is now being fanned out or panned out across more speakers. Let's just reset this so it's just coming out stereo. Now, I think in general, a really good thing to do is to lock your pan to your channel. So if you have your channel settings in terms of the surround pan are set to something very specific, that anything that you're doing for ascend is going to match that. But for sake of demonstration, I'm actually going to make sure that this is unchecked so that we have individual control. Because right now, if I make this change and I adjusted the height, if I now unlock this, notice that this is exactly where we left off. But if I leave these as separate, I can give some really easy ways to actually show what this feature is doing. Okay, so with that being said, let's now open up a bunch of different plugins. And this is a lot of plugins on here, but I'm going to use them to show exactly how this is working. So first things first, well, we have an H delay stereo send, and this is going out to a stereo plugin, but the stereo plugin is living on a 7.1.2 output bus channel. So that's one thing to take note of. Let's solo this out and have a quick listen. Okay, so this sounds exactly how you would expect, right? We have a stereo plugin and we're listening to this stereo plugin and we're hearing the left and right. If I was to go dry, we now hear the same sound here. Okay, let's bring this back up all the way. If I take a look at the surround panner, it's kind of hard to tell, but you have to look at the very top here. I'm looking right now at the surround panner, but I could double click here. This is now the track panner. It says percussion panner, but if I close this and I double click here, we have the percussion sends one panner. What I'm gonna do is instead of having the surround panner be outputting to the left and right, I'm gonna make sure that snapping is on and let's pan this to the left surround and right surround. So now take a look and take a listen. So now we're sending, instead of coming out of left and right, we're actually sending into here. So now you may say to yourself, well, hold on a second, what's going on? The send is active, we're sending something here, H delay is active, but I'm seeing this come in on the left surround and right surround. Watch this. Let's change our output routing from left and right. Let's change the output routing to left surround and right surround.
So take a look what's happened. We can also bypass these outputs too. So this is pretty unique in terms of how we can basically use the output routing if we want to force the outputs of a stereo effect plugin to come out different outputs. Now this is great and all, but what happens if I wanted this to be fanned out across multiple outputs? In that case, we actually have the ability to use multiple instances of the same plugin, and you can even tweak the parameters just a tiny bit for each different one. And for each plugin, you can actually change the output routing so that we could fan that across. It sounds a little bit confusing, so let me show you what I mean over here. What I'm going to do is temporarily, let's map this H delay one, let's map this back right over here, just temporarily. We'll bring these back right over here. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to solo this out, but let's kill the power on H delay and keep your eye on these level meters. Let's find something that's in between where we're getting signal coming out of the left and right and the left surround, right surround. Okay, so there would be an example of this, okay. Now, when you have the multiple instances going, it would simply be a matter of activating the H delay and saying, okay, well, we have left and right. That's going to work now. Let's solo the left and right out and let's listen to them. Okay, I can hear that that's working. But keep in mind that we also know that we're splitting the panning from the actual send panner that we're also sending it out to the left surround and the right surround. So now check this out. We're going to go into H delay two. Let's power this on. And in this case, let's listen to the left surround and the right surround. And we'll make sure that those are soloed. And this mix tool is sitting on the effects track. So you say to yourself, hold on a second. That's wet. It's powered on. We're sending. Go over here. We're going to readjust the output routing. Now we're listening to the left surround and the right surround speakers. Okay. For a moment, let's listen to both of these. Let's solo these both out. And the way that this works is that H delay one, we have mapped to the left and right. And then H delay two, we have mapped to the left surround and the right surround. Now take a listen. Now this doesn't just have to be left and right pairs. You could do some pretty wacky stuff. Let's say that we wanted H delay one Maybe we wanted it to be mapped out. The left would be the left and the right would be the right surround. So you can remap anything to your heart's content. So what I'm going to do quickly here is let's remap these. I'm going to re remap both H delay one and H delay two to just be the left and right just momentarily here. And I want to take a different approach to this. So instead of going for uh, a left and right split, we have our dry sound coming in the left and right. And also let's kill the solos here for our mix tool so we're listening to everything. So this is what we have in terms of our dry signal. And in terms of our panning, this is where it's panned. Just the left and right split and we have no elevation. Now, in terms of the panning for the H delay, we double click to open this up. I'm going to take a different approach here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna swivel this direction around. So the direction will say minus 180. And then now notice here, these are inverted. So in terms of the spread, uh, we're gonna go to minus 100. So now we have everything pointing backwards. And if I was to take a look at this now, whoops, I'll, I'll undo that move. If I was to take a look at this, we are gonna see this show up in the left rear surround and the right rear surround. If we just solo out this effects return right over here. You can see this right over here. This is where it's showing up because this is where it's panned. Let's split the difference between these speakers. And now we have things coming out of the left surround, the right surround, and the left rear surround, and the right rear surround. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remap these one more time. So the first H delay, this is going to be coming out of the left surround and the right surround. Let's test that out really quickly. Let's make sure that that's working. And we can honestly do that just by clicking these two. We're going to be listening to just the effect. Okay, so that's working exactly as I would expect. Now for the next one, because we're splitting the panning on the panner, remember we are remapping the outputs of the plugin, but we have to send the plugin the proper input first. Now I'm going to go to H delay two. And in this case, I'm going to remap this to the left rear surround and the right rear surround. And then we need to make sure that this is activated. And now let's listen to the left rear surround and the right rear surround.
Okay, perfect. And if we listen to both of those together... Okay, perfect. And something that we could do probably is we could make a tiny modification to each of these. This could have a little bit more low end and maybe a little bit less feedback. And then H delay 2 could be something that's completely different. Maybe it's got a little bit more top end. Maybe it's got a little bit of this analog signal in it. Something that's just slightly different. Now I'm going to do one more thing. We have the H delay 2 panner. We have the surround panner open. So let's take a look at H delay 3 and something that we can do that's slightly different. So for this one, what I'm actually going to do for the sends one panner is I'm going to increase the elevation a little bit. And now the minute I increase this elevation, what you're going to see is in addition to the signal being routed and coming in through left surround, right surround, left rear surround, right rear surround, you're also going to see it in the left top mid and the right top mid. But here's the interesting thing. If we listen, if we isolate those two streams, they're going to be full range, obviously. So let's go to the mapping and let's remap those right over here. And then I need to activate the plugin. And I could even do something completely different. Maybe I wanted to hop into milliseconds and we wanted to offset this a little bit and maybe make this a little bit darker, something like that. And then now if I listen to everything together, we have just taken three instances of H delay. We've used one send, but we remapped the output of each one of these. And again, it's everything's to be something slightly different so that we have just a little bit of a different sound for all of these different elements. Now we bring that in with our dry signal. So the idea here is that you have your stereo effects plugins that you love. They could be delays, they could be reverbs, anything. If I was dealing with a reverb that I love to do, maybe I could take the same approach. I could decouple the surround panner, or rather the send panner, from the main track panner. I could send this out the same way I'm doing here, why I'm sending it out in reverse, give it a little bit of elevation, give each one of those reverbs varying amounts of pre-delay to offset things a little bit, maybe filter them slightly different, a little bit of different decay. And instead of having to worry about not having fully compatible Atmos reverbs or Atmos delays, you can use multiple instances of your favorite third-party stereo tools on the same bus channel. As long as you remap the outputs creatively, make some tweaks and adjustments, you can get some really cool sounds. Can't recall if I've seen any other DAWs that allow you to do this same type of thing with the effects output mapping on the same channel. Like I know, for example, you could do different ones and you could send them out different panning, but this is really cool because you can do it on the exact same channel, just multiple instances of the same plugin, just adjusting the parameters and getting it to fit in terms of how your personal tastes would dictate that you want to mix this. So a really cool option to be able to remap the speaker mapping or the outputs of stereo effects channels and just running actual multiple instances of the same stereo effect on the exact same channel. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. We'll catch you for more in the next video. Cheers.